know, despicable me, because he says I'm not directed at me. Yes. Direction of magnitude. What is standard position? Uh, it's an arrow that describes a vector, but it starts in a particular place. Standard position is always oriented with the beginning where? Where? No, that would be standard bearing. Standard position is when the vector's initial point is at the origin. Now, what is true Barry? Yep, starts at true north and goes clockwise. So true bearing starts at north and reads clockwise. It is an angle measure, isn't it? True bearing starts at north and goes clockwise. All right, so now we have three vocabulary words that are new for today. Let's see if we can figure out what they are. What do you suppose we call a vector that has a magnitude of one unit? Unit vector. How about that? Unit vector. The vector sum AI plus BJ is called a blank of the vectors I and J. Yes, it is a linear combination. Which means that a way of describing a vector in standard position in the coordinate plane using the coordinates of the vector's terminal point is called the component form. Component form. Oh, component form. In other words, guy for, guys, for component form, the initial point is always going to be at zero, zero, right? Then it's going to go to some terminal point, and this terminal point is AB, and we use that to write it, we've been doing this all right, already as AB. The pointed brackets mean it is a vector. It means it is a vector that starts at zero, zero and ends at the point AB. Get it? Now notice that these two things are related, aren't they? The linear combination comes from finding what it's component form is, all right? Are we good with this? We understand what we needed to know yesterday and some of the high points. All right, so what are we gonna learn today? We got two things we're learning today, guys. How to find the component form. We did this, we're gonna reiterate it. Okay. And how to find the magnitude and direction. And we are going to apply both of these. Okay. And we're also gonna figure out how to find a unit vector. So maybe we should put this as three. Okay. So we have a couple of things we need to be able to do. So now, a little application here. Vectors in the coordinate plane. These are all vectors that are in component form, aren't they? Do you see it? We've got vector u, vector v, vector w, and then we have some k 
which is negative two. Because it's not in vector point, remember this is a vector. In other words, it has an implied magnitude and direction, doesn't it? This is not a vector, is it? It's not in those pointed brackets. So guess what this is called? It's a scalar, okay? It is just a magnitude. Remember the difference between a vector and a scalar. A vector has a magnitude and a direction, and a scalar is only a magnitude. We can multiply a vector by a scalar, okay? Now, these little lines right here implies magnitude. Do you remember how we find the mag magnitude of a vector? We did this last time. We did this when we were doing polar coordinates also. We used those absolute value, didn't we? Remember, the absolute value of some vector v or z is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, isn't it? We know this. So how would I find the magnitude of u? This is A, and this is B, isn't it? So how would we do this? I would take the square root of 4 squared and add negative 1 squared to it. 4 squared is what? Negative 1 squared? So the result is square root of 17, okay? And we would leave it that way. So why don't you try for V and for W? Okay, so what'd you get for the magnitude of V? Yep, square root of 13. In other words, we're gonna take the square root of negative two squared plus three squared. That would be four plus nine is square root of 13. All right, what did you get for the square root of, or for the magnitude of W? Yeah, one. This one's easy. Negative one squared plus zero squared is just one squared, or one square root, square root of one, excuse me, is just one. So that's the answer. All right, so how do we do u plus w? Guys, we did this last time too, didn't we? We added vectors. That's really all we do. We take u, which is four negative one, and we add w to it. 4 plus negative 1 is what? 3. And negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. Julie, are you writing or are you watching something on your phone? Be honest. Uh, put your phone away. Uh-huh. And take notes so you remember this. All right. So what about KW minus V? How would we do that? How would we do KW first? Yep. Negative 2 times W. And then we're going to subtract V from it, which would be what? Okay, so what would this be? It's just distributive property, isn't it? So this becomes what? 2, 0, and then plus, and this just distributes 2, doesn't it? 
to negative three. Okay, so what do we get when we finish adding that together? Yeah, four negative three. Okay. So why don't you guys try U plus KW plus V? The stack and multiply and all that fun stuff. It's not hard. Yeah. When you multiply by a scalar, it's literally like distributing it in. It's like distributed property for vectors. Okay. So try U plus KW plus V. Get the right answer? Two. Four, two. All right. What does this mean? Uh, yeah. One over the magnitude of W. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what? Magnitude of W. So what would the magnitude of W be? How would I find the magnitude of W? Didn't we find that up here already? Isn't that one? Okay, so magnitude of W would be one, correct? Oops. So one over the magnitude of W is just one over one, which is one. So we're gonna do one times U four negative one, and then we're gonna subtract V from it. So this becomes four negative one, right? And then what does, instead of subtracting, we always add, don't we? We add the opposite. So this becomes positive two, negative three. So what does our answer end up being? Yeah. Guys, if you'll give this a chance and actually do this, this is some of the easiest stuff we've done. It's like basic algebra. It's just a different form of it, okay? Now, last review of what we did last time was, how do we find the component form? Do you remember what the component form formulas were? What does X become? What was the formula for X? R cosine theta, and Y was R sine theta. And these are both, the only thing we have to make sure of is these are both standard position angles, aren't they? Okay. So how do we find the component form of the vector W with a magnitude of six and a direction angle of 60. It says draw and label a diagram. Okay, so here's my diagram. I'm gonna put it on here. It just tells me a direction angle of 60 degrees. We're gonna assume that that is standard position, aren't we? So 60 degrees here. This is magnitude six. 
how do I know, how do I draw in my other two angles? What, is, what do we know? This chunk right here is going to be Y, and this chunk right here is going to be X, isn't it? So how do we find these? So this is going to be in component form. This is going to end up being R cosine, R sine, isn't it? Isn't that pretty much how it's written? The X comes before the Y does? Okay, so what is R in this case? Yeah, the magnitude is R. So it's going to become 6 cosine, what's the angle? 60. 6 cosine 60 degrees and 6 60 degrees. All right. What is the cosine of 60 degrees? It's one half. So half of 6 is 3. And then if I wanted to do this as a unit exact, I would say what's the sine of 6? Don't put the calculator up. What is the sine of 60 degrees? If the cosine is one half, what's the sine? Root 3 over 2. So this would be 6 times root 3 over 2, which means it would be what? 3 root 3. Okay. Now, another way to write that would be 3 i hat plus 3 root 3 j hat. In other words, the i and the j, the i goes with the x component, and the J goes with the mm. Y component. So AB, and this is something to write and remember, AB is A I hat plus B J hat, isn't it? So last chunk of our little review here. What role does the inverse tangent play in finding the direction angle of a given vector? In other words, if we have the vector W and it is equal to AB, how do we find the angle? Yeah. It is the inverse tangent of, oops, not vector. It is the inverse tangent of what? B over A. Okay. Guys, this should look very familiar. If you could do polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar, you could do vectors. It's the exact same stuff. All right? Everybody good? Okay.